Welcome to Now You Talking, which is a new series uh, that identifies with short videos, key terms in the You Talk system. Um, we did behavior. Today, we are doing mind. Now, mind is an absolutely central term in You Talk, and it relates to some of the most confusing uh, philosophical and scientific difficulties that we face. Specifically, there's just a huge amount of confusion regarding what the word mind might mean. Uh, for example, some people take the term actually in a very broad direction, like Bernardo Castro thinks about the entire universe as a kind of mind, uh, this kind of philosophical idealism. Now, if we stay more within a naturalistic framework, say within the science of psychology um, and related fields like cognitive science, philosophy of mind, we certainly see a lot of convoluted com uh, claims about what mind is, but I think we can really divide what people refer to as mind in four different domains. The first domain, interestingly enough, is the domain of behavior. Now, it might be kind of surprising that we would want to focus on the domain of behavior from uh, as mind when we think about the behaviors trying to get rid of the concept of mind scientifically, but actually you need to dive into literature and realize what's actually going on is they're trying to redefine mind in terms of behavior. Actually, a quote from B.F. Skinner captures this, uh, which says, uh, where he says, cognitive scientists like to say the mind is what the brain does, but surely the rest of the body plays a part. The mind is what the body does. It is what the person does. In other words, it is behavior, and that is what behaviorists have been saying. Um, so I think Skinner's actually being a little disingenuous there in some ways, but fundamentally, uh, what I want to hone in on is mind as behavior is one of the issues. A second issue that emerges is what he talks about here in terms of the mind is what the brain does. And if we take the cognitive revolutions insight, here we see another meaning of mind, which is mind as neuroinformation processing. The nervous system is an input-output computational device, and that is what the mind is. Yet in everyday terms, if we talk to people about, hey, what's going on through your mind, what people actually mean is their subjective conscious experience of being, their feelings of uh, sadness or their seeing red or what's in their mind. Um, so here's another definition, another reference, the subjective conscious experience of being. And then finally, if we look to the Western tradition, uh, we see in the emergence of science and philosophy and the Enlightenment, we see a definition of mind that's quite different. This is the higher order self-conscious reasoning mind of human beings, which we get from Rene Descartes, who split the world famously into the physical and mental and said the mental, uh, as exemplified by a statement, I think, therefore I am, is this self-recursive, self-aware reasoning function that seems to be so different from the rest of the world. And that, by the way, then isolates mind inside the human uh, as opposed to anywhere else in the universe. So we have these three different reference, <clears throat> which we can identify as behavior reference, the neurocognitive reference, the subjective conscious experience, and the self-conscious reflection. I call this in my recent book um, the BM3 problem, the behavior mind, mind, mind problem, and argue that these different references are absolutely crucial for us to be aware of. And when we bring into you talk, uh, you talk as its tendency is to afford a big picture view that sees the validity of each of these and then stitches them together in an assimilative network that affords coherence. So how does you talk do that? Well, it starts actually connecting to the previous video with the concept of behavior. Of course, we zoomed way out and defined behavior in very broad terms, argued that it was connected to science, and then showed through the tree of knowledge system and the periodic table of behavior that we can think about the universe as an unfolding wave of behavioral processes operating at different levels and, and dimensions of complexity. With that lens, scientifically, what emerges is the argument or the insight that we can see mind or minded animals as emerging as a particular dimension of complexification. And that's what the tree of knowledge gives us, is the idea that mind or mindedness or the set of mental behavior represents a particular dimension of complexification. This is crucial to understand because we're actually introducing essentially a new term and a new way to identify things in the world. It's not terribly new. If you go back to Aristotle, Aristotle saw exactly the same thing and essentially identified uh, the soul of the animal as a sensory motor looping function. We can call this mindedness. Once we identify a domain of behavior, 
uh, a mind as the domain of behavior, uh, that is the third dimension of complexification, we also can use you talk to see that the culture person dimension exists below, above it and the life organism beneath it. You talk also then argues that once we have mind as the set of mental behavior, we can then identify domains of mental processes um, along uh, the clarifying reference that I just mentioned and what's called sort of the epistemological perspective or the how we know perspective. So it identifies the set of mental behavior as essentially emerging through the neurocognitive processes. And this gives us rise to the first dimension of mind identified by the map of mind called mind one. And it can be specified in relationship to two domains, one inside the nervous system, that's mind 1A, which refers to the uh, information instantiated and processed by the nervous system. And then mind 1B refers to the overt functional activities that the behaviors emphasize. So this actually bridges the neurocognitive and behavioral views traditionally into one set of mental behavior that differentiates where they would see the differences, but also unifies them together in a whole um, picture. Out of mind one emerges mind two, which is the subjective conscious experience of being. Mind two is different because it's only available from the inside. You can never directly observe another person's mind two, and so it can only be seen from the inside. Now, we can talk a little bit about whether there's ever a mind to be. That's a different question. But for right now, we're simply going to say it's just mind two. Instead of with mind one, there's mind one A and mind one B. We then jump up to mind three. Mind three is the domain of talking, justification, and self-conscious uh, reflection. And it also has a private, you have your private speech and public, what I'm doing right now, sharing. But what's unique about mind three is that it's intersubjective language and it flows right through the skin. So you have to be able to A, speak the language to observe it. And at the same time, it goes right through the skin where if you think privately to yourself, hey, I don't really like this guy or say it publicly, hey, I don't really like this guy, it's the exact same informational form. So what we have with you talk is the capacity to do, specify what we mean as mind by behavior in relationship to the third dimension of complexification, behavior of the animal as a whole. And then it identifies the different mental processes as mind one, mind two, and mind three. And what that does is it gives us the right reference in relationship to what we can see from various vantage points and how they evolve and how to differentiate mind, say in the animal mind mental kingdom, and the culture person plane of existence. So ultimately, what is, you t what is mind? Mind is the third dimension of complexification. If we say the mind, it refers to the information instantiated within and processed by the nervous system. And then we say the domains of mental processes, a neurocognitive functional activity, a subjective conscious experience of being, and a self-conscious reflection gives us mind one, two, three. And with this vocabulary, we can finally define mind.